In this video, we're gonna use Lightroom and Photoshop to edit this editorial portrait from start to finish. What's up friends, my name is Pa. Welcome back to SLR Lounge. I am so happy you are here. This is your place for no nonsense photography education. With a tiny bit of nonsense, you know, a little bit fun here and there, but learning the why behind what we do. So look, let's go ahead and dive straight into this. I'm hoping that you guys saw what we did last episode. So when we did part one, we explained how we kind of conceptualized, lit, shot this series of photographs, these editorial doctor's portraits. Now we're gonna go ahead and edit them. This is a good time to pause the video and make sure you download the exercise files, which we are gonna include for Frizzle. That doesn't make any sense. We're gonna include them for free. You guys can find the link in the description of the video. Let's go ahead and dive straight in. I'm gonna grab this shot. So you should have three images loaded, okay? It's these three. Now what we're looking at is essentially the actual final image, which is this middle shot where it's lit and we have our subject's expression. And then we're looking at two plate images. These are the images that we shot side by side without the light. So we basically went with a darker exposure without the light. And then we also did a slightly brighter exposure without the light. The camera is set up on a tripod. And if we go ahead and just glance real quick at the settings, you'll see this one's at 1 100 F5.6 ISO 400. This one's same thing. This one is actually 1 30th of a second. So we're just going for a bit of a brighter exposure with this last one. Now I'm gonna just show you real quick, all three of these images are completely reset out. So we don't have any settings that are being applied to any of them. Let's start with this image. So where I want you to start when you're doing an edit like this, you're gonna be in Lightroom and you're gonna start with the kind of you can call it if you want the key image. It's the image that has the right expression, the right light, the right everything. You're gonna begin with that one. What we're gonna do is edit this to look the way that we'd like it to. And I'm gonna be showcasing visual flow presets. Don't worry though, we're gonna show you exactly what settings are being used and why they're being used and whatnot. The reason why I designed and use visual flow for everything is because these are lighting condition based presets. What that means is you have a look, the look is defined by the pack name. So for example, modern versus pastel versus crush versus mood. Each of these packs have a distinctly different kind of look to them, okay? Then they are adapted to lighting conditions, meaning was the image shot in hard light? Is it an HDR scene? Is it backlit? Was it in tungsten? Was it oversaturated, green tint? These are all the different lighting conditions that yield different results. This is why presets don't generally work because they're designed for ideal lighting conditions. And when you use them on other images, they don't work at all. So I developed this process and we actually patented this process and this is what you're seeing. And when you look at this image, what I'm gonna do is I want to, this image to fit kind of the warm signature style that we're known for and that's the modern pack. But there's quite a bit of deep shadows here, okay? And also some bright highlights. So what I'm gonna do is actually start this with hard light. This is going to essentially pull the highlights a bit while raising the shadows a bit and giving my toning and everything else that I want. So again, I'm gonna walk you through exactly what's being done and if you want to save the settings out, you can, you can have the settings and, and have it for yourself. So what's happening here is we can see that the overall image has gotten brighter. What's going on is the tone curve. So if you actually look at this tone curve, this tone curve is designed to brighten and add contrast back on a statistically sampled basis. So what we're essentially looking at is, hey, what does the typical correct raw exposure look like? How much does it need to be brightened? How much contrast is needed to get to this look? And we dial that in. So you're gonna dial in an S curve that follows this shape. And this is the resulting difference of simply that. What this does is it frees up your exposure and your contrast and everything else to be adjusted as needed. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is bring the exposure down a bit. I'm gonna bring it to about right here and I'm also going to just double click contrast to bring it down to zero out. Okay, I'm gonna go a little bit darker. While we're here and we have a close to a, a correct uh, exposure, I'm gonna go ahead and set my white balance. Press W. You just need to select an area that's neutral. It doesn't have to be uh, white or gray. It just needs to be neutral in color tone. So I'm gonna select there and I like to kind of air on the side of a little bit warm. So I'm gonna go ahead and just leave the tint as default and I'm gonna bring the temperature up a smidgen. Smidgen, is that a, yeah, that's a word. So now what we're gonna do is get to highlights. We've pulled highlights and whites down quite a bit. That white is to compensate for hard light. 
Again, the boost in shadows and blacks is to compensate for hard light because hard light has deep shadows and very bright whites. So we're pulling down whites, we're adding quite a bit of shadows. And if you wanna tweak or adjust there, you can, but usually it's gonna come out pretty solid. I might bring my black point up just a little bit to about right there, but it, it's really kind of pretty dialed in because again, these are all statistically sampled and tested over hundreds of raw files. So this is looking good. What I might do is bring, actually, you know what? The whites look good. What I'm gonna do is just bring the exposure down a smidge. I'm gonna stop saying smidge as well. That's the other thing I'm gonna do, stop saying smidge. We're reducing texture and clarity just a little bit. Everything else is default. We have a tiny bit of tweaks going on in HSL. So I'm pulling the reds a little bit more towards the uh, kind of magenta side. Same thing with the oranges, same thing with the yellows, as opposed to more towards the orange side, essentially getting the greens a little bit towards the teals, very minor adjustments. Here, the saturation is a little more significant where we're pulling out some of the reds, pulling out some of the oranges. We wanna create a, a subtle warmth that's not too overpowering. And so that's the adjustments being made on the saturation side. I also want the blues to appear natural. So we subtract a little bit of blues out of them. We brighten up luminance because reds, oranges, and yellows, this is where kind of, well, primarily reds and oranges, where skin tones lie. Again, I wanna land with a slightly more flattering look for skin tone. And then we go ahead and add in split toning. Split toning is set to 40 and nine, 30 and six, and we add balance of plus 60. What this is doing is essentially adding a little bit of warmth to both the shadows and the highlights. So if we turn this on and off, What's happening to the image is split toning is helping to unify all the color palette, okay? It's adding a little bit of the yellows into the blues, a little bit of yellows into the grays. It's adding all these yellows and oranges to kind of unify all colors. So we end up with a more polished sort of look. This is one of the beauties about split toning that gets overlooked far too often is, is how it can help to really kind of tie together an overall look. These are our detail settings. You guys can pause, dial those in if you want. Um, and that's really it. We don't have any calibration or anything else that we're doing. Lens correction is off for this image. Okay, so we're here. Now what I want to do is actually start working in a little bit of burning, okay? I have these tools. These tools are part of Visual Flow Retouching Pack. And if you have them, you're just gonna click Radial Burn. What that does, if I press Shift M, it's dropping a radial burn directly into the center of the image. These are just shortcuts and time savers from having to go over here, select it, adjust the exposure, adjust the settings, and then drop it in manually. So if you don't have it, you just add a radial filter. You pull down exposure and you drop it in where you want it. With it added, we just simply move it to the right place. From here, there's a little tip and trick. Hold down Alt or Option if you're on a Mac. Click and drag, and it will increase or decrease the strength of a local adjustment incrementally. So whatever settings are dialed in, it will adjust incrementally. All I'm gonna do now is add one more. I'm gonna do a graduate filter with the same burn. This one's gonna to go top down. I'm gonna just kind of burn and darken down the top of the image a little bit. And that's really it. So you'll notice that from here to kind of the final, this was the final color grade on the original version. I went with something a little bit more warm. It's kind of up to you guys right now. I'm in a slightly cooler mood. I might just dial back the contrast a tiny bit more and maybe we'll warm it up a little bit. Should we warm it up? Yeah, it looks good. But that's really it, that's what we've done. So this is where you're gonna pause for a moment because what we just did now needs to be applied to the plate images, okay? The plate images was this one as well as the brighter version over here, okay? So the easiest way to do this, I find, is just to have your key image selected, jump over to this image and hit previous, and then jump over to the second play image, hit previous again. You can also use sync, you know, it doesn't really matter. With all three of these selected, I'm gonna go ahead and right click, go to edit in, and we're gonna say open as layers in Photoshop. Now, all three of these images have been processed identically. They're, they're, they're one and the same, and now Photoshop is opening them, and it's gonna automatically stack them into layers. This just saves a whole heck of a bunch of time in having to manually copy and paste these images on top of each other. Okay, so I have all of my images loaded into Photoshop. I'm gonna press Control-0 or Command-0 if you're on a Mac to just center up the workspace so it looks nice for y'all. You can see all three images here. What I'm gonna do is load up, and if you wanna name these, you totally can. Just double click on it and say, this is gonna be the key layer. You name it whatever you want. Not like it's a technical name. I mean, you could give it a technical name if you want. And then we have a dark plate. I'll say dark plate, and then we'll say here, bright plate. 
This is for you guys. If I'm doing this for myself, I, I usually wouldn't do this. I'd be in and out real quick. So this key layer is basically where our flash is um, and, and everything is lit in the shot, but all the settings in these other layers, the color grade is identical between them. The last thing I'm gonna do is select all three of these by holding shift and clicking. We're gonna go to edit and then we're gonna go to auto align layers and just click auto. Even with the camera on a tripod, this is still a good step because there's always a one pixel, two pixel difference. And you can see that there's a little tiny line here that made an adjustment to get them kind of aligned. So I like doing that just as a little step. So what I usually like to do is start with the key layer on top, that primary layer, put it on top, add a mask, and now you're gonna select a brush and with a black brush, okay? So press B to select brush, press D to switch your palette back to default, X, to switch it to black, okay? X will flip the, the color palette. I'm gonna put the flow at 100, opacity at 100, everything else is just standard, and now I can just literally paint the light stand out, okay? Do you see how crazy simple that is? Paint the light stand out, and what I'm gonna do is actually kind of move around the room, kind of eliminating the extra light. And this is that light painting portion of this technique that I absolutely love because I'm essentially controlling where the light lands. And check this out, so long as my subject doesn't really move, I can even remove light from him. I can remove the light from his person in the shot. And as if he didn't move, then we're good to go. Like it just looks like it's in shadow now. So I don't really wanna go that kind of in depth to it. What I would do is if you want to control certain things, like maybe at the bottom of the image, I want this to be just a tiny bit darker, then I would kind of reduce the flow uh, to like say 15% or even 5% would be enough. Cause I just wanna have a little bit darker towards the bottom and I'm controlling where the light's going. Isn't that fun? Isn't that cool? Like we remove the light stand, but we can also just sit here and paint light in exactly where we want it. So when you look at the mask, this is what the mask looked like. So it's just simply darkening around the places that we don't wanna have that light. Okay, when you're using such a large feathered brush, just make sure that you're not accidentally painting over your subject. Um, yeah, that won't be that won't be good. But that's it, that's how we remove him, uh, that's how we remove the lighting and everything from the shot, right? Okay, so from here, I would just save this out. There's a couple other things that I did. Um, you'll notice that I didn't use the bright plate. So I usually create the bright plate in case there's certain areas of the frame that I want to bring back, okay? So here's the same mask applied now over the bright plate versus the dark plate. And you can see what that's gonna do if, if, there, if there's ever an image where like, you're like, man, I want certain areas brighter, certain areas darker. Well, you can see I can apply the same thing over a bright plate and same thing over a dark plate. And you can have certain areas that are gonna be brighter, certain areas are gonna be darker. You have complete control in post and you can essentially paint light very simply where you want it. So this is a fun light painting tool that I think people often forget about uh, in the process. What I'm gonna do now is press Alt Control Shift E or Option Command Shift E if you're on a Mac, just to create everything to a new layer. This is the layer that I'm gonna use to make slight touch-ups. So for example, right here, I'm gonna press J. We're gonna select the 16. I don't like numbers, you know, like kind of being in these shots. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just use the patch tool to clone that out. Um, anything else that you wanna make adjustments to, you know, you're welcome to. That's probably the only major one that I would do for this. And maybe a little bit of retouching if the client asks for it. Um, but beyond that, I would call this pretty good. Like, that, that's really it. The other thing you could do is you can go up to the top and you can actually select this and just use content aware fill. So press shift backspace. And watch this, content aware, and then you're just gonna go color adaptation turned on, press okay, and it's gonna beautifully just kind of knock out the ceiling and almost make it look like this was just a background. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Like, so easy. You now have a, a better crop and everything. Um, and that is it. So we're gonna save this out, press control S, and let's go back to Lightroom for just a moment. Um, I'm actually not gonna save this because I already have the file. So let me just close this guy out. Okay, so here was my final edit for this. Now, the last thing that I would do here is take that raw file that you have, and let's say that you have other images that you want to deliver, right? Press Control, Shift C, or Command, Shift C. You're gonna just press check all. Um, usually I would not select uh, crop and that kind of stuff, but we're just gonna select everything knowing that we're having, we have everything selected. I have my other images in the sequence selected. So what I would do is just, oops, I think those are the final TIFFs. So let's turn off that filter. Or I think we have it, there it is. So you're gonna go over the other images that you intend to deliver in this set and press control 
Let's go reset this. Press Control Shift V or Command Shift V to paste it in. And then you're simply going to adjust kind of your, your burns. So press Shift M to adjust your burn. Go ahead and select the graduated burn. Make sure that you're, you're kind of adjusting it in the right places you know, and, and, and make everything kind of lined up and good. So that's how we get the entire set looking uniform. So if you look at our final set, okay, I'm gonna press the five stars and you can see the entire set where we have identical color tones and a, a set of images that just all match and are cohesive. So I hope y'all enjoyed this editing and light painting technique. If you guys like these kind of long form start to finish edits and tutorials, please let us know in the comments below. I'd love for y'all to give the video a like and subscribe to the channel while also turning on your notifications. So if you're already subscribed, turn on your notifications. This is one of the reasons we have 400,000 plus subscribers, but uh, you know, not that many people see our actual uploads because we started this channel a long time ago and people didn't have notifications turned on. The other reason is I took a long break, but we're not gonna get into that. In the meantime, please stay safe. You guys can follow me at Born Uncreative on TikTok, Pi Jirsa on Instagram, and I'll see you guys back here, same time, same place. Peace.